Hi, welcome back to Study OT with Sophie. Can you please pardon me for a second? I forgot to do something before this video. I must do it now. Okay. There we go. Perfect. This week's topic is on grasps. There are two types of precision. Power grips and precision grips. The activity dictates which grip is needed. A power grip is used when an object must be held forcefully while being moved about by the proximal joint muscles. Holding a hammer or a door knob. Here's a hammer. So think about this as being the power grip. Okay? Often a power grip involves an isometric contraction with no movement occurring between the hand and the object being held. Right? Isometric movement. See this? Isometric. Imagine that. A precision grip often referred to as precision prehension is used when an object must be manipulated in a finer type movement such as holding a pen or thread needle. Here's my pen. Okay, precision grip. Think of that. Before we continue, I need to show you what a functional position looks like of the wrist and hand. The wrist is in slight extension, right? The MCP and PIP joints are in some degree of flexion, as you can see, flexion, right? Just want to show you. And the thumb is in opposition. Okay? So wrist is in slight extension. MCP and PIP are in flexion. The thumb is in opposition. Okay? The three commonly described power grips are cylindrical, spherical, and hook. The cylindrical grip has all the fingers flexed around the object which usually lies at a right angle to the forearm. See that? When you receive your diploma for your OTA or OT program, I know that many of you are graduating, congratulations! This is how you hold it. Cylindrical grip, remember that when it comes to the test. Some examples of a cylindrical grip is a hammer while holding it or a wheelbarrow handle. A spherical grip has all the fingers and thumb abducted around an object like this. Okay, think about that. The fingers are more spread apart the palm of the hand right the palm of the hand is often not involved activities involving a spherical grip include holding an apple or a doorknob or picking up a glass by its top the hook involves the second through fifth fingers flexed around an object in a hook like manner like this The MCP joints are extended and the PIP and DIP joints are in some degree of flexion. Therefore, this is the only power grip possible if a person has a median nerve injury and loses the ability to oppose the thumb. Remember. Okay. Precision grips tend to hold the object between the tips. Like this. 
of the fingers and the thumb. The intrinsic muscles are involved along with the extrinsics. The thumb tends to be abducted or opposed. These grips provide more fine movement and accuracy, such as using a pen. Um, a needle, right? Fine motor, maybe holding a quarter, um, a key, could be small little things, even using your makeup, putting on your earrings, putting on your pen, clasping on your necklace. It involves a lot of precision. With the pad to pad grip, the MCP and PIP joints of the fingers are flexed. The thumb is abducted and opposed, and the distal joints of both are extended, bringing the pads of the finger and thumb together. When it involves the thumb and one finger, usually the index finger is called pinch grip. It may also involve the thumb and two fingers. Right? This is called the three jaw chuck. Usually what we do with the children in a school setting, we say, let's make an animal. Quack, quack, quack. Or let's make alligator mouth. Hop. Pad to pad grip, right? This is it. Now tip to tip grip involves bringing the tip of the thumb up against the tip of another digit usually the index finger, to pick up a small object. It could be a coin or a pin. It is also called the pincer grip. This type of grip becomes difficult, if not impossible, with very long fingertips. It can. The pad to side grip, also called lateral prehension, has the pad of the extended thumb pressing on an object against the radial side of the index finger. This is a strong grip but allows less fine movements than the other two types. Think about turning the key. Pat to side grip. The side to side grip, somewhat similar to pad to side grip, requires adduction of two fingers, usually the index or middle finger, like this. It is a weak grip and does not permit much precision. Okay, that's how you hold it. It is most frequently used to hold a cigarette, a pencil, or an object with two fingers like this. The lumbrical grip, also known as the plate grip, has the MCP flexed and the PIP and DIP joints extended. The thumb opposes the fingers holding an object horizontally. The grip is usually used when something needs to be kept horizontal, such as a plate or tray. Muscles is to flex the MCP joints while extending the IP joints. This is how it's supposed to look. I'll show you. You're holding a plate. The MCP is flexed and the PIP and DIP joints are extended. You see that? That's how it's supposed to look. This video was made for students who emailed and asked me questions specifically about hand therapy and different types of hand grip and hand grasp. I hope this really helped you. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.